August 10. Jeremiah Forbidden to Marry The Lord gave me another message. He said, Do not get married or have children in this place. For this is what the Lord says about the children born here in this city and about their mothers and fathers. They will die from terrible diseases. No one will mourn for them or bury them, and they will lie scattered on the ground like manure. They will die from war and famine, and their bodies will be food for the vultures and wild animals. Judah's Coming Punishment This is what the Lord says. Do not go to funerals to mourn and show sympathy for these people, for I have removed my protection and peace from them. I have taken away my unfailing love and my mercy. Both the great and the lowly will die in this land. No one will bury them or mourn for them. Their friends will not cut themselves in sorrow or shave their heads in sadness. No one will offer a meal to comfort those who mourn for the dead, not even at the death of a mother or father. No one will send a cup of wine to console them. And do not go to their feasts and parties. Do not eat and drink with them at all. For this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, In your own lifetime, before your very eyes, I will put an end to the happy singing and laughter in this land. The joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will no longer be heard. When you tell the people all these things, they will ask, Why has the Lord decreed such terrible things against us? What have we done to deserve such treatment? What is our sin against the Lord our God? Then you will give them the Lord's reply. It is because your ancestors were unfaithful to me. They worshipped other gods and served them. They abandoned me and did not obey my word. And you are even worse than your ancestors. You stubbornly follow your own evil desires and refuse to listen to me. So I will throw you out of this land and send you into a foreign land where you and your ancestors have never been. There you can worship idols day and night, and I will grant you no favors. Hope Despite the Disaster But the time is coming, says the Lord, when people who are taking an oath will no longer say, As surely as the Lord lives, who rescued the people of Israel from the land of Egypt. Instead, they will say, As surely as the Lord lives, who brought the people of Israel back to their own land from the land of the north and from all the countries to which he had exiled them, for I will bring them back to this land that I gave their ancestors. But now I am sending for many fishermen who will catch them, says the Lord. I am sending for hunters who will hunt them down in the mountains, hills, and caves. I am watching them closely, and I see every sin. They cannot hope to hide from me. I will double their punishment for all their sins, because they have defiled my land with lifeless images of their detestable gods and have filled my territory with their evil deeds. Jeremiah's Prayer of Confidence Lord, you are my strength and fortress, my refuge in the day of trouble. Nations from around the world will come to you and say, Our ancestors left us a foolish heritage, for they worshipped worthless idols. Can people make their own gods? These are not real gods at all. The Lord says, Now I will show them my power. Now I will show them my might. At last they will know and understand that I am the Lord. Judah's Sin and Punishment The sin of Judah is inscribed with an iron chisel engraved with a diamond point on their stony hearts and on the corners of their altars. Even their children go to worship at their pagan altars and Asherah poles, beneath every green tree and on every high hill. So I will hand over my holy mountain, along with all your wealth and treasures and your pagan shrines, as plunder to your enemies, for sin runs rampant in your land." The wonderful possession I have reserved for you will slip from your hands. I will tell your enemies to take you as captives to a foreign land. For my anger blazes like a fire that will burn forever. Wisdom from the Lord This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. 
But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. Jeremiah's Trust in the Lord Like a partridge that hatches eggs she has not laid, so are those who get their wealth by unjust means. At midlife they will lose their riches. In the end they will become poor old fools. But we worship at your throne, eternal, high, and glorious. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who turn away from you will be disgraced. They will be buried in the dust of the earth, for they have abandoned the Lord, the fountain of living water. O Lord, if you heal me, I will be truly healed. If you save me, I will be truly saved. My praises are for you alone. People scoff at me and say, What is this message from the Lord you talk about? Why don't your predictions come true? Lord, I have not abandoned my job as a shepherd for your people. I have not urged you to send disaster. You have heard everything I've said. Lord, don't terrorize me. You alone are my hope in the day of disaster. Bring shame and dismay on all who persecute me, but don't let me experience shame and dismay. Bring a day of terror on them. Yes, bring double destruction upon them. Observing the Sabbath This is what the Lord said to me. Go and stand in the gates of Jerusalem, first in the gate where the king goes in and out, and then in each of the other gates. Say to all the people, Listen to this message from the Lord, you kings of Judah, and all you people of Judah, and everyone living in Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. Listen to my warning. Stop carrying on your trade at Jerusalem's gates on the Sabbath day. Do not do your work on the Sabbath, but make it a holy day. I gave this command to your ancestors, but they did not listen or obey. They stubbornly refused to pay attention or accept my discipline. But if you obey me, says the Lord, and do not carry on your trade at the gates or work on the Sabbath day, and if you keep it holy, then kings and their officials will go in and out of these gates forever. There will always be a descendant of David sitting on the throne here in Jerusalem. Kings and their officials will always ride in and out among the people of Judah in chariots and on horses, and this city will remain forever." And from all around Jerusalem, from the towns of Judah and Benjamin, from the western foothills and the hill country and the Negev, the people will come with their burnt offerings and sacrifices. They will bring their grain offerings, frankincense, and thanksgiving offerings to the Lord's temple. But if you do not listen to me and refuse to keep the Sabbath holy, and if on the Sabbath day you bring loads of merchandise through the gates of Jerusalem, just as on other days, then I will set fire to these gates. The fire will spread to the palaces, and no one will be able to put out the roaring flames. The Potter and the Clay The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go down to the potter's shop, and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me, and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped, so he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Then the Lord gave me this message, O Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. And if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but then that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not bless it as I said I would. Therefore, Jeremiah, go and warn all Judah and Jerusalem. Say to them, This is what the Lord says, I am planning disaster for you instead of good. So turn from your evil ways, each of you, and do what is right. But the people replied, 
Don't waste your breath. We will continue to live as we want to, stubbornly following our own evil desires. So this is what the Lord says. Has anyone ever heard of such a thing, even among the pagan nations? My virgin daughter Israel has done something terrible. Does the snow ever disappear from the mountaintops of Lebanon? Do the cold streams flowing from those distant mountains ever run dry? But my people are not so reliable, for they have deserted me. They burn incense to worthless idols. They have stumbled off the ancient highways and walk in muddy paths. Therefore, their land will become desolate, a monument to their stupidity. All who pass by will be astonished and will shake their heads in amazement. I will scatter my people before their enemies as the east wind scatters dust. And in all their trouble, I will turn my back on them and refuse to notice their distress. A Plot Against Jeremiah Then the people said, Come on, let's plot a way to stop Jeremiah. We have plenty of priests and wise men and prophets. We don't need him to teach the word and give us advice and prophecies. Let's spread rumors about him and ignore what he says. Lord, hear me and help me. Listen to what my enemies are saying. Should they repay evil for good? They have dug a pit to kill me, though I pleaded for them and tried to protect them from your anger. So let their children starve. Let them die by the sword. Let their wives become childless widows. Let their old men die in a plague and let their young men be killed in battle. Let screaming be heard from their homes as warriors come suddenly upon them. For they have dug a pit for me and have hidden traps along my path. Lord, you know all about their murderous plots against me. Don't forgive their crimes and blot out their sins. Let them die before you. Deal with them in your anger. The Faithful Rechabites This is the message the Lord gave Jeremiah when Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king of Judah. Go to the settlement where the families of the Rechabites live and invite them to the Lord's temple. Take them into one of the inner rooms and offer them some wine. So I went to see Jeazaniah, son of Jeremiah, and grandson of Habazaniah, and all his brothers and sons, representing all the Rechabite families. I took them to the temple, and we went into the room assigned to the sons of Hanan, son of Igdaliah, a man of God. This room was located next to the one used by the temple officials, directly above the room of Maaseah, son of Shalom, the temple gatekeeper. I set cups and jugs of wine before them and invited them to have a drink. But they refused. No, they said, we don't drink wine, because our ancestor Jehonadab, son of Rechab, gave us this command, you and your descendants must never drink wine. And do not build houses or plant crops or vineyards, but always live in tents. If you follow these commands, you will live long, good lives in the land. So we have obeyed him in all these things. We have never had a drink of wine to this day, nor have our wives, our sons, or our daughters. We haven't built houses or owned vineyards or farms or planted crops. We have lived in tents and have fully obeyed all the commands of Jehonadab, our ancestor. But when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon attacked this country, we were afraid of the Babylonian and Syrian armies, so we decided to move to Jerusalem. That is why we are here. Then the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Go and say to the people in Judah and Jerusalem, come and learn a lesson about how to obey me. The Rechabites do not drink wine to this day, because their ancestor Jehonadab told them not to. But I have spoken to you again and again, and you refuse to obey me. Time after time I sent you prophets who told you, Turn from your wicked ways and start doing things right. Stop worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here in the land I have given to you and your ancestors. But you would not listen to me or obey me. The descendants of Jehonadab, son of Rechab, have obeyed their ancestor completely, but you have refused to listen to me. Therefore, this is what the Lord God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, Because you refuse to listen or answer when I call, I will send upon Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I have threatened. Then Jeremiah turned to the Rechabites and said, This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. You have obeyed your ancestor Jehonadab in every respect, following all his instructions. Therefore, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Jehonadab, son of Rechab, will always have descendants who serve me.